it is a very special week. Thanksgiving football. It is a time for every team to play, either on Thanksgiving Day or Thanksgiving week, where the, a lot of people, millions of people across America, will probably meet up on football Sunday or Saturday for Friendsgivings or a late Thanksgiving. Now everyone's going to be celebrating Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. Um, every team will celebrate, a court, unless you're a Chiefs or a Cardinals fan. But if you're a Cardinals fan, you have plenty to celebrate. You are a game ahead in the NFC East. And who do you play next week? Let's see, who do you play next week? Oh. Oh, you're going to be 10 and 2, because there's no way to win that game. <sighs> unless something really drastic happens. Or the upset of the deck, the upset of the fucking season happens. Because it's going to take a lot to beat that fucking Titans-Houston Texans game. I think the Bears beating the Cardinals might be it. Anyway, week 12. We're, um, I don't know. I'm not going to start the Thanksgiving games. We're just going to work our way down. Of course, Bears are our last. So we're going to start with the Bengals at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, looking at their record, I'm going to look at the record of a few teams. This is one of the most lopsided series, with the exception of the Eagles uh, Jets series, because the Eagles have won every single series. They have the Jets have never beaten the Eagles ever in franchise history, and this goes back to like the 70s. Um, that's the only uh, series to have that up until yeah, because in 2020 the Bears uh, blew out the Texans, and that was their first ever win against the Texans. That was that was pretty neat. Um, so, a very lopsided. Their last win over, uh, the Bengals' last win over the Steelers was November of 2015. That was six years ago to the day until an early Christmas miracle blessed the Bengals fans. A win over the Steelers. And I remember this win, because it was, not, I mean, I enjoyed it, because the Steelers were talking a lot of shit, you know, Corvette, Corvette, um, dancing on the logo, and they just got their shit kicked in. Um, don't let the score fool you. It was like 24 to, like, 6 or something, and the Steelers got, like, two garbage time touchdowns. It was like 7 to 27, and they got, like, a garbage time touchdown or two. And then the bank, yeah, that was a straight up blowout. Uh, 14 points isn't really a blowout, but the Steelers were supposed to win that game. Um, the Bengals have are finally good. Um, I know they were kind of good with Dalton because they went to the playoffs, I think, twice with the Red Rifle. Um, but of course, those are wild card exits. But making the playoffs in the NFL is still an accomplishment. And for some teams, you got to consider that a successful season. Like the Lions making the playoffs, it's a successful season. Even if the Lions last, the Lions they made the playoffs three times in the last decade, but all of them were wild card exits. They haven't won a playoff game since 1991, last 30 years. The Bengals are playing real good, coming off a blowout win over a decent Raiders team that's been having some really hard times. The Steelers are coming off a uh, oh, where are the Steelers? The Steelers are coming off a very impressive. Loss, where they put up 37 points. There's only one touchdown uh, from uh, repeating the uh, fateful score. One, probably one of the most painful losses in Yinzer history, losing to your uh, historic rival of the Cleveland Browns. Um, Browns fans, that that must be like the Super Bowl to you guys. I mean, I would love nothing more to beat the Packers in a playoff game. And put up, like, nearly 50 points. It could have been 50 if you kicked a field goal or got an extra touchdown instead of burning clock, but it was a smart thing to do. Um, as I, I like the Browns, they're one of my side teams. Of course, Bears fan always is the top priority, no matter what. But I kind of watch these teams on the side, kind of root for them in the playoffs. And I still think the Browns are made the playoffs, but this Bengals team I really like. I, I see them making noise in the playoffs. I see them making the playoffs as a fifth or a sixth seed. And I see the Browns coming in and I think Bills, I think you're going to retake the throne. Um, and then I got these two teams making the playoffs and the Steelers barely missing out. 
I think this is going to be the game that's going to hurt them because I got the Bengals sweeping the Steelers for the first time since, I think, 2009, uh, I believe. Yeah, 2009. But I think it's going to be a way closer than the last one. I'm going to go 27-24. Stellar football. Next up, the Jets. At the, this game's going to fucking suck. Um, let's, let's go records. Um, Jets, Jets, Jets. Um, I don't know where to go. So I got the Jets here. The Jets, uh, these two teams have been weird. The Texans have been playing a little bit better as of late, and the Jets have just been the Jets. But they're 2-8, and eight, but those two wins are nothing to scoff at. They, Both these teams have something in common. They pulled off a huge upset versus the same team, the Titans. The Titans have one loss to a legitimately good team. They have a higher loss rate to losing teams, which it flabbergasts me. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm befuddled, but the Jets. I, I honestly think the Texans are gonna get this one. Um, but as a Texans fan, I would be kind of pissed because you went from possibly because if the Lions win this game, which even though they have a better chance, I don't think they will. The Lions win this game, and you guys didn't win against the Titans game in a meaningless win. Um. They could have had the first overall pick if the Lions won at Pittsburgh or beat the Browns. They were only a field goal away or two safeties away. They were four points away from beating the Browns. Touchdown. Even my Dexter point would have beat them. And now you're looking at what? Got like the fifth, maybe fourth overall pick because there's a lot of tiebreakers. Um, but a win is a win. If I were the Texans, I just would have tank. I would have tanked. He said, "Hey, you got you got our win week one. We're not gonna go 0 and 17. Maybe pick up one in the late season once we clinch that first overall." But at this point, you might as well win a few more. So I got the Texans winning a very ugly game of football, 17 to 10. Actually, no, no, 13 to 10. I think this is going to be an ugly game of football. This, however, is not. This is going to be a good game of football. Very two offenses. One coming off a blowout win versus... Uh, ooh. Wow. Well, versus the Falcons. A shutout win, my dad. Which shut, shutouts are pretty rare um, in the NFL. Not unheard of. Not really even rare, but they're they're uncommon in the NFL. Um, but I, I kind of consider a three point as like a gentleman's shutout. Um, you didn't shut them out, but you only held them to three points, and those three points are probably in garbage time anyway. Same thing with scoring one touchdown. Um, but garbage time points are still points. So actual shutouts are they're uncommon, but they've happened. This won't be a shutout. I think this is probably going to combine for 60 points. Um, the Titans are coming off a rough loss. I think they're going to play with ferocity. Um, I think the Patriots are going to play really hard, and they're going to put up a really big fight. But at the end, I'm going to have the Titans prevailing. 35-32. to 32. Great game versus two great quarterbacks. Mac Jones for the Patriots. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan still was, does he still play for the Titans? I don't know. But the Titans, Derrick Henry, they're looking exquisite. They're looking pretty good. Next up, the Chargers at the Broncos. Mm, good game. Good game. Um... Two teams that are only a game behind each other. Um, if the Broncos want any hope whatsoever at um, taking a playoff spot, this is a must-win game. Because if they lose this game, they're five and six. 
and two games behind in the playoff. If they win this game, however, they knock these teams out, put the Bills up, temp Col Colts up temporarily, depending on when this game finishes, and the outcome of our games. But look at them. They're close. They are ninth seed, only two seeds out, and they're right behind the Chiefs. So if I'm a Broncos fan, hope for a win here, hope for um, a Chiefs loss. But they're on a bye right now, so um, this is going to be vital for them to catch up. Because you can't rely on a Chiefs loss to set them back because they're on the bye. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the upset here. I got the Broncos winning a close one. An ugly game of football, 21-17. I just, I think they gave everything for that Steeler game. I think the Chargers are going to bounce back, and they're going to be fighting hard for the seventh seed. Next up, we got the Cleveland Browns versus, the, uh, no, I don't got this next one. Got the Cleveland Browns versus the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens, um, I'm assuming Lamar Jackson's going to be back. I don't know. But if Lamar Jackson isn't back, there's no way they win that game. They barely beat my Bears, um, which my Bears are decimated enough. They've given up on their coach. Our franchise future QB is going to be a star. He got injured, and now Nagy won't even play him because he just refuses to play. It pisses me off, really. It pisses me off. Um, but Dalton put up numbers against. They gotta learn. If they play like that against an actual competent team, like the Browns, or God forbid, an actually like really good team, like the Cardinals or the Packers, or the Bucks, Bills, Patriots, the teams like that, or the Titans, no way. So for that reason, and for the reason I think Baker's finally gonna recover from his injuries, um, I'm actually gonna go with the Browns to upset. And make this NFC, um, not NFC, AFC uh, North race a very intense one. But this will have the Steelers on the outside looking in. It should have been, that should have already happened. They should be 4 6 and 1, but refs still out game in Chicago. Bears should also be 4 and 6. Anyway, so yeah. I got the Browns barely eking out to win 24-21. Yeah. Next up, we got the Thanksgiving games. So uh, everyone's... Uh, this is going to be at 3 to 6. So this is going to be around a time... Uh, this is going to be during dinner. Uh, most families are probably going to have it 5 o'clock, maybe 4 o'clock. Their standard time. So if you're watching this, um, their mountain time in L.A., uh, LA, uh, Las Vegas, so, uh, I think 6 o'clock here, Cowboys are, they're central standard time too, so, yeah, 5 o'clock here, 6 o'clock, uh, central, 7 o'clock eastern, they're all gonna be chomping down, eastern time will probably be finishing up dinner, by the time this is on, however, it'll be all but over. Um, most families are going to be home or be heading home by 8 o'clock. So this this one, this one, uh, this game is going to be on while people are like showing up, people tuning out after the Macy's raid. But this is, I think, is this right here. This is going to be the best game. Because as a Bears fan, I know that Andy Dalton, as much as a good guy he is, I like Dalton, but ain't nobody want to watch Andy Dalton and Tim Boyle play with two teams that have a combined three wins, all of that on the Bears side. We have, this team these teams have a combined record of three 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 sixteen and one. Three no way nobody wanna watch that. But this Cowboys team, these are two oh one is at five hundred, one is seven and three, two uh, strong offenses and decent teams. As much as I kind of like the Raiders' chances, they have a chance to actually pull off an upset. But I'm going to go off the Cowboys. They're America's team. Plus, this hurts the Packers' seedings. That makes me happy. So, I'm rooting for the Cowboys this game. Dogs, are you okay? Doggies. Um, I got the Cowboys putting up a good fight. 20, not 220. That would be a really good game. Uh, 27 
17. How about them Cowboys? These Cowboys, they're real good this year. But I really don't want them to win the Super Bowl. But if it means the Packers aren't in the Super Bowl, because my Bears aren't going to the playoffs. I don't want them to go to the playoffs anyway, because Nagy will stay in every two years. But I root for whatever team plays Green Bay. And I know that the Cowboys and the Packers, when they get in the playoffs, those are some good entertaining games. Next up, we got the late night game. The Buffalo Bills versus New Orleans Saints. Two pretty good teams, 5-5, five 6-4. And five, and the Bills' offense is coming off a route. And every time they had a loss, they come out strong. This Bills' offense is legit, but they have consistency problems that I think won't hurt them in the long run. But they lose games that they should win, and they win games that they should lose. And I think they have a good chance of losing this game, so I'm actually going to go if they win. Because they seem to win these types of games versus opponents of equal strength. Because if we look at this, versus the 5-1 versus losing opponents, the only loss they've had was... Did the, were the Colts 500? They're 2-3 and three versus winning teams, however. That kind of concerns me. Um, but the winning teams that they have lost, to, they have played a very stacked schedule. This is one loss that shouldn't have happened, though. This might end up hurting their seeding. This could be the difference between getting that first round by and settling for 6th or 7th seed. But it's just an extra wild card game, extra playoffs. And I'm all for that. Because I like this Buffalo Bills team. And I got them winning this game. But it's going to be closer than people think. Mm, 24. No. Uh, 24. 21. Close game. I think it might come down to a winning field goal. Maybe even overtime. Hell, my, my tie might happen for all I know. Next up, we're coming back. A little time skip. Sunday football. Got the Panthers at the Dolphins. Dolphins of late are 4-7. and seven, And you know what? I, I'm happy for them. They're actually winning some games. And they don't have a first-round pick. Their first-round pick is to the Eagles. The Eagles fans might aren't really happy about this because they were two wins. They had the potential of getting the first overall. If the, Dol if the Lions picked up a win or two and the Dolphins lose out. But now Texans are winning, Dolphins are winning. Their first round pick is evaporating. So if I'm the if I'm an Eagles fan, root for the Texans, root for the Jags, root for the Jets to win, root for all these teams to win, root for the Dolphins to lose out. Because if these teams win a few and they lose out, that's the only chance you got. And if the Lions pull a late season miracle. Um, but... The Eagles, they got they uh, got a pretty good trade from the Dolphins. Um, so you have no incentive to tank. And I just think that this Dolphins team is... They're, uh, they're back. They're playing like they should be playing. They're still not good. They're not a good football team. But they're not a bad football team, too. They're playing decent. I think there's a chance that they might finish with seven, maybe even eight wins if they keep playing like this. And I think this is going to be one of them. But it's going to be a slow game. 17. 14. I don't know. 13. 17 to 13. Dolphins win. Let me check my uh, my win totals from last, last uh, week. Yeah, what is my win... Win percentage from last week. My last week record. Oh, oh, I didn't. I'll update that later. Um, but yeah, Dolphins. I think they're not gonna make the playoffs. Don't get me wrong. There's no way that happens. You can't go. You can't go two and six or two and seven and then pull out a few late wins. They. I don't. The Bears kind of did it last uh, year. You know they were what three and. I think three and seven or some shit or no 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 they were five and seven dropped and they pulled out a miracle playoff run but no that was cool and all I guess anything can happen but this is for pride at this point give the Eagles a worse draft pick and get some wins for the fans I'm all for that next up ugh, this is gonna be another ugly game of football the Jags versus the Falcons now. The Falcons aren't really going to be favored in a lot of games because they're the Falcons. Um, 
Plus, they have been known to choke a lot in um, games like this. But you're playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jags do have one impressive win over the Buffalo Bills. But in my opinion, that was just a fluke. Flukes happen in the NFL. The Texans beat the Titans. Does that mean they're good? No, they're still 3-8. and eight. They're still 3-8. and eight. Well, I'm assuming they're going to be 3-8 and because they're probably going to beat the Jets, if we're being real. Um, but I, I just I have the Falcons coming in here. And taking the dub. You know that would hurt the Bears playoff chances a bit. But it, I, I'm not even worried about the Bears playoff chances anyway. It's oh, it's over. It's only a couple more weeks till we're totally eliminated. Anyway. So with that. Uh, Falcons. I, I predict they're probably going to play an ugly game of football. But I think they're going to come off strong. I actually got them wi winning a pretty good game. 30-17. to 17. Next up, got the Bucks versus the Colts. Bucks are coming off a blowout win versus the Giants on Monday Night Football. Um, Brady, you know, is Brady. He had a rough game versus Washington, but it's flukes. It's it's fucking Tom Brady. Uh, Colts are um they're six and five right now. They got a great win over Buffalo. Uh, but I don't really see that trend continuing. It was a fluke win over Buffalo. They just weren't prepared. Um, they had a just they just weren't clicking. So I got Tampa Bay winning this, but I think Indy might come out strong. Maybe it might even take a lead, maybe a two score lead. But I think Buff I think Bucks are gonna come back. I think they're gonna take this win. 27 21. Bucks win. Bears, I always say for last. The Eagles versus the Giants, a good old NFC East matchup. Now the Eagles, the Eagles just blew out the Saints. The Eagles are flying high right now. The Eagles are, in my opinion, pretty good, and I got them winning this game. Plus, that makes her seat a little bit better. Whoopee, fly Eagles, fly on the road to victory. Let's go. I got them winning this game, 33-21. Eagles move up to the eighth seed and begin to threaten other playoff teams. You know, people are counting out the Eagles in the early season, but they might try to make a move. Vikings and Eagles, don't be surprised if the Vikings and Eagles snatch up that six and seven seed. Because I can see that happening. These two teams have the potential of stealing that seventh seed from 49ers. I can see these two teams being wildcard teams. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl or anything? No, but they had the potential of being a playoff caliber team. If they just get... If Mike Zimmer shuts the fuck up and let his team play. Because the Vikings... Let's move, on, let's move on to the Vikings quickly. The Vikings versus the 49ers. Now, I think the Vikings are going to make a run. As much as I don't like the Vikings, I, I, I'd rather have them win the NFC North uh, than the Packers. And I think the Vikings have the potential to, you know, make an upset run. Do I think they're gonna win the NFC North? Nah, but I think they might make it a little bit, um, a little bit tight, tighter than Packer fans want it. And with the 49ers, the Bears could have beat them. Fields went off. Um. This 49ers team is 5-5. Five and five. This Vikings team is 5-5. Five and five. But going off pure talent and watching the games alone, because I'm in Chicago, um, the NFC North is a very tight, close. You know, a lot of people have families that has Viking fans, Packer fans, and Bear fans because of the close proximity. Every team was within a probably six-hour at most drive within each other, with the exception of the longest distance is Minnesota to Detroit. Detroit to Chicago is like a four, maybe five-hour drive. Chicago to Green Bay is probably another four to five hours. Then maybe Chicago to Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's about a seven hour. It's all within a day's travel. Maybe get a hotel. So it isn't like the NFC East where it's like Philly to Dallas. It's all very close. You will find, exception, I don't see a lot of Lions merch down here, but I do have friends that are Viking fans. And I got a lot of Cheesehead friends because it's so close together. So 
Um, I, I've, I get them on the local market most of the time, along with the Packer games. Like, every other Packer game is in the local market. Because it's only like a four-hour drive. And watching some of them, they have talent. They just got to learn how to execute it right. And I think seeing they're in the sixth seed right now, they are in a playoff spot. Not even the seventh seed. They are in the sixth seed right now. And I think if they lose this, they're out of the seed. But I think they're going to win this. I think they're going to win this. Who gets the seventh seed? The Eagles. Eagle fans, root for the Vikings. I got the Vikings winning this game. 24 to 17. Vikings are 6 and 5. They finally get above 500. Think same thing almost happened last season, but we beat them. We didn't get the playoff spot. But I think this time they're probably going to split up the Bears, and they might. They're going to try to close up that 6 or 7 seed. Um, and they might make some noise in the playoffs. Next up, we get the Seahawks at the Washington football team. Um, wow. Um, I think this game is going to be the nail in the Seahawks season coffin. Because Washington football team is good. They're pretty good. Um, let's check their winning. They're 2-6 versus winning teams, but they're 2-0 versus losing teams. That is what I'm saying, because the... The Seahawks are a losing team. Uh, I think this is the worst I've seen them in my life that I can remember. Because um, in 2010 we, we played them in the we played them in 2006 in the playoffs, and then in the division we beat them in 2010. Um, but for since 2010 they've been in the playoffs. I think like every year, almost every year they were in the playoffs last year, 2019, 2018, 2017. 20, they were like. When I was little, I didn't really know how to play us work. I just assumed the Seahawks were always in. Because they were in the playoffs all the time. But it, it's kind of sad to see because there's no way they're back in the playoffs. And I think mean, this is going to be the nail in the coffin for um, the Seahawks. I think the Washington football team is going to get a little... I wouldn't really call it an upset win, but I think the football team wins a ugly game of football. I don't know, 19 to 16. Next up, the LA Rams versus the Packers. The Packers had a a crushing loss versus the uh, Vikings. A loss that I think changes a lot of things. The Packers won that game. Lines are eliminated. I mean, they've already been eliminated for the last five to six weeks. Um, but because they lost that game... Uh, Rodgers, I think, is injured. I hope he heals up. They lost a few other good players that might change a lot of seasons, a lot of games, outcomes. Um, and along with that, they lost to not their biggest rival because their biggest rival will forever and always be the Bears. That's how it should be. We're, our, we're their biggest rival. We've got a lot of respect for them. Well, they did lose to a division rival, and a division rival, that's only two games plus a tiebreaker. So they own the tiebreaker. And I think they're playing a really good Rams team that is coming off, um, they're coming off a bye. And yeah, they did lose in Week 10 versus the 49ers. That's a divisional game. Divisional games are different. I think this Rams team is going to come off strong. They're going to come off angry, and I think they're going to upset the Packers. But the Packers are going to put up a lot of points, so I think it's going to be a very high-scoring offensive game. 35 to. 20. It's a 31. Um, and the Packers are going to fall to the 4 seed. But they're still 8-4. and four. But if I'm a Packers fan, if this outcome happens with the Vikings getting an upset win, I start to get a little worried. But luckily, you're going on a bye, a badly needed bye. And you're playing the Bears week 14. Um, also, Packer fans, you're going to have to get used to that idea. You might have to root for the Bears um, week 13. But... I just know we beat them, so I'm sorry. But if we do, though, um, that will pretty much that will help the Packers out a bit. So, Packers 8-4. and four. Now, finally, we got one more game to go. The Bears versus the Lions. Ooh, what a game. Everyone's going to be talking about this game. This is the biggest game of the season. Thanksgiving football, 
I'm gonna wake up, watch the parade, and then watch this uh, monstrosity. I, there's no hiding it. This is gonna be an ugly game of football. A very ugly game of football. The Bears have Andy Dalton. Justin Fields is out for an injury that he he, he he's fine. Um, Matt Nagy has just had probably the worst week of his career here with the Bears. Um, he's lost the locker room. If they win this game, they're probably going to win this game for the players and for the fans. I, I can see them just completely doing their own plays, maybe listening to Lasers playbook and completely ignoring Nagy. I want him to get I want him to get this win. And then I want him fired. Get Nagy one more win and then leave. Bye. I would love that. Um the Lions uh, their quarterback, Jared Goff, you know, how bad, how as bad as he has, he's not as bad as Tyler uh, Bray. Plus, he appeared in the fucking Super Bowl. Now, admittedly, the Saints should have been in the Super Bowl. That Super Bowl win was rightfully there. Is that pass interference call? Um, as bad as I thought the ref ball was versus that Steelers game a couple weeks back, that was a regular season game and a pointless season that we already were out of. If that happened in the NFC Championship, if I was a Saints fan, I'd be, I'd still be pissed about it. A lot of them probably are. You deserve to go to that Super Bowl. You probably, you would have beaten the Patriots. You would have at least put up more than three points. But this team, it's gonna be an ugly game. But uh, I, I'm not gonna pick against my team because when that, when I did do that, um. I picked the Bucks to beat us, and they did. So I'm not like gonna reverse jinx us. I'm fairly confident in this game. If we do lose, Nagy's gone. So it's a win-win regardless. But I think the Bears are going to get their first win since October 10th. They're not going to win negative one. I think they're going to win a ugly game of football. It's the line. I think they're going to chop up the Lions defense, though. Uh, 27 to 14 Lions. Bears win. Finally get that win. Even though the season's over at this point. They improved the 4-7. and seven. Hoorah. Thanksgiving save. But regardless of the outcome, Nagy's weeks are numbered. He's not going to last till the end of the season. It's only a matter of time. And by matter of time, I mean next week. Because there's no way we beat the Cardinals. No way. I mean, hope I'm wrong, no. Hope I'm wrong. There's no one get injured. Um, anyway, these are my predictions for week 12. Thanksgiving football. Go Bears. Please just get a win. Football.